Alright, so today I would like to talk about combinations and bit strings. So first I wanted to find what a bit string is, and the reason I'm doing this is because bit strings are one of the most important tools when it comes to combinatorial proofs, which we will get to towards the end of this video, and then I'll have another video up about them coming soon. So a string over the alphabet 0, 1 is called a bit string. So it's a pretty simple definition. Any string that just has zeros and ones is a bit string, and likewise, a string over the alphabet 0, 1, 2 is called a ternary string. These you see every so often, not as much as bit strings, though. So that's what a bit string is, and now I want to move on to a student council problem. So if you remember our last video, we had an election of students for president, vice president, and treasurer. Now, a group of nine students is holding an election for a council of three people. How many different outcomes can occur? Well, if you recall our previous video, there were P93 ways to elect a president, vice president, and treasurer. But, if you think of it, when you're on a council, your role doesn't matter. Everyone has the same role. So, let's say you have two people and one in one outcome for the election, one could be president and the other is vice president, and that was one outcome. But if you just switch the president and vice president, that's a different outcome. But on the council, it wouldn't matter. So you can't. It, the answer to this question isn't P93 because you're over counting. So how do we account for this? Well, if you think of it, the outcomes where the same people are elected to different roles will result in the same council. And how many ways could three people be given the three role, three roles? Well, there's three factorial ways that can occur. Therefore, we see there are P93 over three factorial outcomes. Or we have C93, which we will read 9 choose 3. So there are 9 choose 3 outcomes to this election for a council. Now I want to go and define what a combination is. So the number of combinations of n objects taken k at a time is denoted C and k. So n choose k is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial, and this is equal to p and k over k factorial, because we permute the objects, but then, since the roles are not distinguished, we divide by k factorial to account for that. So we read this as n choose k. Now I want to move to a problem with bit strings that involves the combinations and the choose function. So our problem is how many bit strings of length 4 have three zeros? So since the zeros are not be able to distinguish, we just use the combination formula. So it's 4 choose 3. And more abstractly, the number of bit strings of length n with k zeros is n choose k. And we will use this soon. So now I want to go into a basic combinatorial proof. I'm going to have an, another video up on this later that goes more in depth on how it works. But basically, we are going to prove that n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. And we are going to do this by counting bit strings. So here's how we're doing this. Let us count the bit strings of length n that contain k zeros. So notice the left-hand side counts this set. As in the previous slide, we said bit strings of length n with k zeros, that's n choose k. Notice that if a bit string has of length n has k zeros, then it has n minus k ones. Because if something's not a zero, then it's a one. So there are n minus k ones. So the set of bit strings with k zeros is the same as a set of bit strings of n minus k ones. 
So thus, the right-hand side counts the bit strings with n minus k ones, which is the same as the left-hand side. So we count the left-hand and right-hand side in two different ways to show that the equality holds, and that proves this combinatorial identity. All right. Thanks for watching.